Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'll be walking you through the latest version of Retouch Pro, which is version 2.0. And in case you didn't notice, my voice sounds different because I am using this awesome text-to-speech software called Speechalo. If you want to learn more, I'll post a link down on the video description. So, Retouch Pro has been my go-to, retouching panel in Photoshop. Since using it, my editing workflow is now faster and made the process of face and skin retouching much easier. Today, we'll be checking out version 2.0, which has a couple of new features which I will mention. Under skin retouch actions, they have added frequency separation 16-bit and dodge and burn 50% gray. They also added new actions for object selection, such as luminosity mask and dark mask. I will try to use these newly added functions and see what they can do. If you'd like to purchase this panel, use the link down in the video description to get a 10% discount using my coupon code. And with that being said, let's jump into Photoshop and edit some portraits using Retouch Pro 2.0. And just a quick side note, the process that I'm about to show you are based on my own experience and personal workflow. Feel free to edit your images the way you want to. This is not an in-depth tutorial, but merely a demonstration of how I would normally use these functions in Retouch Pro 2.0. Okay, so let's start with this image right here. Let's first remove the obvious and distracting blemishes and dark spots. Add a new blank layer, and then add a black and white adjustment layer. And then adjust the red and yellow sliders until the skin defects become more visible. Then click on the blank layer. Select the Spot Healing Brush tool. Make sure that Sample All Layers is enabled. And set the mode to Normal. And then we zoom in and remove those unwanted blemishes. This method is a non-destructive way of removing skin defects. I will go ahead and fast forward this step. And once we're done, we can delete the black and white adjustment layer. This is the before. And this is after. Let's zoom in. Before. After. And now we create a merge visible layer by pressing Ctrl Alt Shift and the letter E. And then we can now use the Retouch Pro panel. Let's click on the Frequency Separation 16-bit function right here. As you can see, it created a new layer with a layer mask. Let's expand this. The image has now been divided into two layers. A high layer for skin texture. And a low layer for skin tone. Let's first hide the high layer. And select the low layer. And then we go to Filter. Convert for Smart Filters. And click OK. And then we go back to Filter, Blur, Surface Blur. And then we adjust the radius and threshold values to a point that the colors blend well and that the details of the face are still apparent. Anyways, if you make a mistake, you can always go back and adjust these values at any time because we have converted the low layer into a smart object. All right, that should do it. Now we can unhide the high layer to see the skin smoothing effect. This is without frequency separation. With frequency separation. Let's zoom in. Without frequency separation. With frequency separation. You can see the difference, right? So what do you think of Retouch Pro 2.0 so far? Comment down below. We can fine-tune the effect by clicking the white layer mask right here. Select the brush tool. Make sure that the foreground color is set to black. And paint on the areas that you don't want to apply the smoothing effect. Like so. Usually, I exclude parts of the eyes, eyebrows, nostrils, and lips. But it all depends on your preference. And if we want the pores or skin texture to be more prominent, Select the high layer, and then add a brightness and contrast adjustment layer. Then press and hold the Alt key, and then click the line between the adjustment layer and low layer, like so. This creates a clipping mask, 
so that only the high layer will be affected when we make adjustments. And now we can increase the contrast values accordingly. I will go all the way to 100 just to show you how it looks like. Before. After. Let's zoom in. Before. After. What do you think? Is the skin texture too much? Again, we can always fine-tune the effect by painting on the layer mask or by decreasing the opacity of the frequency separation layer. This is the original image with skin defects removed. And this is with frequency separation 16-bit. Not bad, right? All right. Let's move on to another function which is dodge and burn on 50% gray. Let's create a merge visible layer again by clicking Ctrl Alt Shift and the letter E. And then we click on the gray 50% function. Then we select that layer. Click on the brush tool. Make sure that the foreground color is set to white. And then we decrease the flow to about 5%. And then we carefully target and paint on just the highlights of the face. You may need to keep changing the size of the brush accordingly. Just make sure to paint on the bright parts of the image. Dodge and burn requires a lot of time and practice. But don't be afraid to make mistakes. Give it a try and have fun with it. Alright. So this is the before. And this is after. Let's zoom in before after as you can see i've added a few highlights to the face just to enhance the facial features all right we're done adding highlights let's now add shadows let's click on the gray 50 percent function again to create another layer and then this time we use the black brush and then paint on the darker parts of the image Keep in mind that this is subjective and will depend on your style and creativity. Just make sure only to apply subtle effects to enhance the face and add dimension. Let me go ahead and fast forward this step. Okay, so this is the before. And this is after. I think I've overdone it, so let's decrease the opacity to about 50%. Let's zoom in. Before. After. Alright. This looks good. We can then select both layers and group them together by pressing Ctrl and the letter G. This is before dodge and burn. After dodge and burn. Again. This is purely for demonstration purposes. When you are doing your own edits, take your time and be precise as much as possible. So as you can see, accentuating the highlights and shadows on the face can make a big difference to the image. Okay, so we're done checking out the new skin retouching functions. Let's now go to the newly added selections function and have a look at it. So basically, luminosity masks are masks that are created based on the luminosity of the image, and they help you target the shadows, midtones, and highlights when you are making adjustments. Dark mask is just the complete opposite of luminosity mask. There are literally multiple ways to use luminosity and dark masks. It's up to you on how you will utilize them. Okay, now that you have a better understanding of these masks, let's try to use these functions. Let's first merge all the layers. And then we click on dark mask right here. To view the mask, hold the Alt key and click on the mask. Then to go back, hold the Alt key again and click on the mask. All right, let's go ahead and click on the luminosity mask. And then let's have a quick look at the mask. All right, so now that we've created both the dark mask and luminosity mask, we can start playing around with it. With these masks, we can create split tone color grading effect by targeting the shadows, midtones, and highlights of the image and applying colors to them. 
Let me show you what I mean. Let's unhide the luminosity mask. And then add a solid color adjustment layer. And then pick a color for the bright parts of the image. Let's go with orange. And then we create a clipping mask by holding the Alt key. And clicking on the line between the adjustment layer and the luminosity mask. And then we change the blend mode from normal. To screen. And then we decrease the opacity of the solid color adjustment to about 35%. Alright, this looks good. So we're done color grading the bright parts of the image. Let's now add some color to the dark parts of the image using the dark mask. We just repeat the same process we did to the luminosity mask earlier. We add a solid color adjustment layer. And select the teal color. And then we create a clipping mask and then change the blend mode to screen. And then we decrease the opacity according to our liking. 15% looks great. So as you can see, if we toggle the color adjustment layers on and off, it is only affecting the masks that we have targeted and the colors are blended harmoniously. This is a very cool color grading technique. Let me just make some minor adjustments right here. Alright, now I'm happy with this effect. Let's now select all the layers and group them together. So this is the original color. And this is with color grading effect using the dark mask and luminosity mask. So, this is just one of the many ways to use the dark mask and luminosity mask. These masks are used as accurate selections of shadows, mid-tones and highlights of the image, and from there, you can apply different layer adjustments. So, what do you think about Retouch Pro 2.0? Have you bought one already? Oh by the way, Retouch Pro now allows you to purchase it for lifetime license, or by annual subscription. So if you don't have the budget, you can go for the annual subscription. Click the link down below and use my coupon code to get a 10% discount, but that is only for the lifetime license. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more Retouch Pro tutorials, and click on the bell icon to turn on notifications. I'll see you on my next video. Thank you for watching.